well our pastor is in the house and, uh, I believe that this is a miracle because this is um, like I would say like a wrong time for Bishop to come because he's been abroad preaching for days you know he came straight into the swollen Sunday stress worked so hard and I was telling some overseers on Monday that if we are feeling tired I don't know what word he'll use on himself but through it all he still has, has us on his heart and he has found the time to be here amen so before Bishop comes up uh, Bishop I want to say a very big thank you to you for making the time to be with us in Kolebu Our lives are never going to be the same. Amen. Kolibu, are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready for your miracle? Then with Jesus' joy, put your hands together. Let's go. Joshua Hills. thank you for a blessed time in your presence we sense your Holy Spirit teach us and change our hearts I pray for your word to advise us and counsel us and change us and I thank you that every life under the sound of my voice is going home changed and transformed and blessed thank you for your blood that washes away our sins and helps us to walk boldly before you we love you, Lord. Transform us. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, Amen. Yeah. Wow. You may be seated. Amen. Can I have a volume? Can I have some volume? Hallelujah. Amen. All right, that's too much. Too much. Can you hear me? Yes. Powerful. Well, it's good to be here in Kolibu. That melody I see outside, come inside. Why are you outside? Come sit down in the space. Amen. Amen. Okay. Beautiful. Well, um, I called your pastor and invited myself. So, forgive me for imposing myself. Hallelujah. And uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to be part of what God is doing in First Love Church. Amen. Amen. Um, today, can you hear me? Yes. You sure you can hear me? Yes. Today, I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to preach for. I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach, how many of you can hear me? How many of you cannot hear me? Cannot hear me too well, how many of you? Oh, you can all hear me. Beautiful. Well, I'm going to share with you about Jesus. Um, one of the things, when you look in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, uh, which is, a wonderful scripture there's no there's no comma in the Hebrew did you know that there's no comma in the Hebrew so when it says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given there's, there's, this was Isaiah about 4,000 years before Jesus Christ prophesying about the birth of Christ and it says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called if I was preaching another sermon, I'd have showed you that it's not he that will be called, it's his name, which is wonderful, but that's a totally different sermon. But his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. There's no 
wonderful counselor. One of the things about Jesus Christ is that he's a wonderful counselor. And when we look at Jesus, our lives are advised. Now, today, what I'm going to share with you might be a bit surprising to you. I think last time I came here, it was also a bit strange. Forgive me. But um, Jesus Christ is a wonderful counselor. You know, people go around the world to learn things. People, even in ministry, people go around the world to learn about how to do things. I, I see conferences and programs about so many things. But Jesus says, learn of me. Few pastors learn from Jesus. Yeah, Jesus said, I'm meek and lowly, learn from me. And so that should teach you that the life of Jesus, Jesus was supernatural. He was, he, you know, John chapter 2, verse 24. I'm closing soon, don't worry. John 2, 24. John 2, 24. John 2, 24. Who's, who's behind the screen? John 2, 24. Who's there? Good. Jesus did not commit himself unto them. Jesus offered no form of commitment to any man while he was on earth. No, no marriage. He didn't have a best friend. No. He didn't, even his mother, he said, this is not son, behold your mother, man. He didn't commit himself to anybody. Listen, listen. Because he knew how many men. Yes, including me and you. <laughs> he knew, when he knew who we were, he offered no commitment. That's why I didn't marry. Next verse. And needed not that any should testify of man, because he knew what was in man. Jesus knows what is in mankind and how we are. Pastor Bob, if you want to understand humanity, the, the study of humanity is a study of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus knew what was in man and how we are. When you listen to him and him speaking, you see that this is somebody who understands humanity. And so today we pick up our story from Luke chapter 12, verse 1. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. Now, why am I reading verse 1? Because I want to give you perspective. Okay? To show that you're around, just repeat the word perspective. perspective. I know it was a bit difficult for some of you, but that's fine. Now, look, look. In the meantime, are you there? When they were gathered together, now all of you are, are you are you listening to me? Yes. If you are in the room, look at me. Don't have to read. The thing is there. Just look at me. A big crowd. <laughs> now imagine an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they were walking on each other. Can you can you see the size of that crowd? Wow. This is Jesus is preaching. <laughs> and the crowd is so big. People are walking. I've never seen a crowd like that. I was in a big church on Sunday, but I've not seen a crowd where there are, people are walking on each other. Then Jesus begins to preach to his disciples. Look at it. Beware ye of the living of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And he's preaching a powerful sermon. He goes on to speak about the Pharisees, how people should be faithful. Then he goes on to talk about persecution by verse 13. Now, can you imagine the crowd? There's no microphone. No. <laughs> There's no mic. He's shouting. Are you with me? Look at it. By verse 13, I thought the guy would have jumped to verse 13. What school is that? Anyway. So, one. No, listen. No. How many of the company? How many? Oh, come here again. No. How many? How many? One person in the big crowd shouts. <laughs> Jesus, oh. Shouts from the crowd. One person, a big crowd of people working on each other. He shouts, Master, <laughs> speak to my brother that he divide. My father died. <laughs> my father died and left all of us money. Are you listening to me? Yeah. The money was 100,000 CDs. He left us two houses, one at Bawe and one in La Paz. Master Jesus! Now, Jesus preached about Pharisees. Look at, look at verse 12. 
Look at verse 12. The Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. He's teaching them about when you are persecuted and you are preaching and whatever. Then, then the guy said, Master! <laughs> that, that's why I read to you John 2.25. He knew how we are. Yes. So, to me, like, it is Jesus standing there. The guy said, Master! Master! Speak to my brother that he should divide so that I take the house in Bawe and you take the house in La Paz. Then the 100,000, we should do it 50-50 or we should pay for the funeral, whatever is left, we divide it half-half. Is it fair or it's not fair? He knew what was in man. <laughs> Next verse. Oh, I'm having a good time. And he said unto him, Man, who made me? Hey. Who made me judge or a divider over you? Melody, I would have said, you made you because you are God. Mm. And the whole point of being God is to be a judge. Okay. And our perspective of God is that he's fair. And that God, and, and when we see God, and when we see Jesus in this day and age, we think of our problem that Jesus has to solve. Yes. So none of you should criticize this man, no. Because all of you come to church and the pastor was preaching about salvation. But what was really on your mind is you are waiting for the communion. Hey, sit down. Hey, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> what was the man? You what was the man? You are waiting for the communion time. To drink the communion, believing God for you to pass your exams here in medical school. So before, before you criticize this young man, sir, think about yourself. Who made me a judge or a divider over you? This is Jesus. Who made me? Who made me the one who comes to solve your problems? Because. Now, let's remember what all of this is about. At the end of the day, all this is about money. The whole conversation here is about money. About cash. Yes, the inheritance is cash. It's just a good word for cash. Inheritance, money. Then Jesus starts to teach about something which the guy has not brought up. The guy is talking about inheritance, fairness, justice, help. <laughs> and Jesus says, Beware of covetousness. Which is, covetousness is the financial version of selfishness. It's greed. Beware of wanting things on the earth. Beware of wanting money. Beware of wanting prosperity. Beware of trying to make yourself okay on this earth. Be careful. Now that word beware means be, be on guard. Have you, have you seen beware of dogs before? Yeah, beware of dogs means the dogs are here already. So beware. So Jesus was telling Christians that like covetousness or greed is like an aggressive thing that tries to invade your life. And so as soon as the, the guy, he, he called out a very deep prophetic word that what is wrong with this young man is something called covetousness. By the way, I'm preaching about um, Jesus and the rich fool. That's the same one I'm preaching. And I'm preaching for how to preach salvation. I've not gone, of course. You can check it. Okay? For a man's life consisted not. I'm almost finished preaching, by the way. A man's life. You know, a man's life or existence on this earth is not made up of how many things he has. How many? Then we enter into my favorite part of Jesus' ministry. My favorite part of Jesus' ministry is not his healing. No. The, my favorite part of Jesus' ministry is when he starts to tell a parable. Why? A parable is a story which is full of prophetic insights about Jesus Christ and his opinion of man, number one. And number two, Jesus Christ and his mind and his way of thinking. So it's, a, it's actually a parable that helps us to fulfill uh, First Corinthians chapter 2, which says we have the mind of Christ, 2.16. It's the only way to have the mind of Christ is to understand how his mind works. So then Jesus launches into a story. Now remember, now this guy is feeling very stupid in the crowd because he has interrupted the whole sermon. Now everybody's looking at him. Some people are even saying that you see we're all receiving them. That's why I started. Before you judge him, remember that we are all that guy. 
they are all that there. Then Jesus says, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Analyze this. Number one, the man is already rich. Number two, it's not hard work that made the, his prosperity increase. The Bible says the ground itself, which is God, provided and the ground has brought forth fruits. Amen or no amen? Yes. Are you still with me or your time? Yes. Now, he's talking about covetousness and somebody's inheritance. You have to remember. That's why we started from there. And the whole crowd is still there. And he thought, now this is one of the weirdest parables for two reasons. Number one, he never says anything in the story. And number two, he's the only character in the story. Wow. There's no other actor in the whole movie except this guy. It's quite serious. So the whole thing is thoughts. And so Jesus Christ is actually addressing our thoughts, not what we say or what we do. Our thoughts and what is inside us. That's why I said the Bible says he knew what was in man. Everything was a thought. He thought to himself, what shall I do because I have no room for the extra blessing that has been provided to me by God. Do you understand what's going on? What should I do? My life now has the basics. Paul says, having food and raiment, let us there with be content. Now I'm okay. I have food. I have a place to stay. I'm in medical school. I don't have any problem again. But now I need to plan for extra prosperity. This is Christianity today. You don't like my preaching? You become quiet. I don't know why you become quiet. Okay. This is what I'll do. I'm going to pull down my barn, which is where you store my bank. Okay. And I'm going to get a bigger place to store more. Then I'm going to put all my fruits and my goods into this new barn I'm going to build. Notice he's planning for prosperity. His life and his mind and his heart are just, his entire existence is geared towards prosperity and doing well to secure himself I'll, I'll show you next verse next verse and i'll say to my soul i'll say to myself you have much goods laid up for many years he's securing himself for many years on this earth he's planning for the future on this earth he's planning for how life must be okay on this earth and that's the only thing that he's thinking to himself notice he never occurred to him that he shouldn't help somebody with what he has Take your ease. This is, this is, are you listening to me? This is his life's goal. How similar he is to all of us. My life, do you, you know your life's goal is not to be a doctor? A puto. A nurse. That your goal in life is to be a nurse. Please, let's be serious. That's not your aim. Your aim is if I can get the right qualification and I can get the right job and I can do the right uh, specialization and I can work in the right place, then I can get enough money to reach this same point. Take ease, eat, drink, and be merry. That's the life's aim. As I say, before you criticize somebody, you may not like my message today. The way it's going. The way it's going. It'll be difficult. Sandra, take thine ease. This is your life's aim. Your whole life, your energy, your thoughts. Do you know what it takes to pull down a band? Do you know the drawings you have to do to get the architecture to be able to expand the band on the same piece of land? Do you know how, 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 how difficult it is to demolish an already built band? Where you put the goods that are already inside the band, which have filled the band, which is why you don't even have space. Do you know how do you know the type of project we are talking about? It's not a small project, too. and he's he gathers all his forces. His intellectual forces, his thoughts, his mind, his talents, his money, his everything to reach this goal. Take thine ease. Eat. Drink. And be Jesus is talking to them. He's talking to them. Then he says, That night, God says, Thou fool. Hey, this is serious. Though. 
thou fool. This night, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Next verse. So, it's profound. So is he. So are you. Today, today Jesus is talking to you. So are you. This is the end of the sermon. So are you. I want you to think about this. This will change the rest of your life if you can concentrate. So are you. Who spend your life, your energy, the only reason you are anxious is about this for things on this earth. Your whole life is to try to plan for the next what you think is many years on this earth. So is he that keeps on working, you know, our efforts. It's not that Jesus is not concerned about us here. You go on to say, Fear not, little flock, the Father knows you have need of these things. He knows and he cares, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, last week I was watching Angel Has Fallen. Watch the new movie that's come out. And the guy was framed, it's a whole thing, he was framed, and so they were blaming him for everything. And on in the cinema, the guy was arrested by his former colleagues because they thought he was a traitor, but he was being framed, and it was essential that they believe him. So those of us in the cinema were saying, what's wrong with you? What's wrong? And the, the guy was saying that, no, we can't trust you. You don't have clearance. No, we were saying that, you, this is the time to discuss clearance. Or not. So now, is it that clearance is not important? No. It's very important to have clearance and to have security protocols. But when you stand outside the world of the movie and you have the big picture of everything that's going on in the movie, you kind of know that in the light of what is going on, this is not the time to discuss such a small and minute issue like a security protocol. And you see, you see, you see, if only, if only you could step out of this world and stand from the perspective of heaven. And that's what Jesus was giving them. Jesus came here for 33 years. Somebody who has been alive before Genesis and has been watching everything. So when he came and his thoughts were on his project to save mankind and he was preaching to all of them about how they had to reach the whole world and how the most important thing was what God had for them. And in the midst of that, somebody wants to discuss an issue which come only solve a solution for maybe the next 30 or 40 years and after that it becomes you if that if that and so jesus says be very careful about being greedy or orienting your whole life to follow things on this earth be very careful because when you do that you become a fool and then you find yourself being required in heaven at the wrong time and when not you've made you've made no savings in heaven and then he says so is he that lays up and you know what I love it's not rich toward God you know you know what that means it means that person's riches are not directed and channeled and used for God your life is sad and all your money is used on this earth look lay it up treasure for self I wish I could say I never think about myself but it's not true it's not true I, I, I wish I said I think about you more than I think about myself. But probably not true. Because I live with myself. I only see you once a week. Once a week. Live with myself. But you see, if you spend your how disappointed you'll be as the years go by and all your life's effort is to reach the point where you are married, you have a house, you have a car, then what? And that's what Jesus was saying to the guy. It's not that you, it doesn't matter whether your brother, I'm not being insensitive, but in the grand scheme of things, a lot of what we are doing is useless. And you know what he says next? He turns to his disciples and he says, Therefore I say unto you, stop thinking about your life. I mean, do you think God is in heaven and then he's thinking that the only thing he has to solve is comprehensive sexual education problem in God? Do you think that's God's priority? Or God is trying to solve the exchange rate of the CD against the dollar? Or your, your beloved issue? 
He said, don't stop thinking about your life. Then he, he, then he says, what is your eat of for the body? What is your Life is more than me. Consider the raven. A raven is a great bird. Like a normal bird, we could have used an eagle or a peacock or, or something which is at least a bit powerful. But he said, take the, even the most basic raven. He said, I don't care about ravens. So I feed them. But for, for to, to direct your whole life. And that's how some of us are here. We don't, we don't care about God. God is the last thing on our mind. When we see Jesus Christ and we come to church, we think of a problem that might be solved. And so you force the church to preach a false gospel of God is going to come through for you. And, God, and that when we preach it, this is the passage that says it is the kingdom. And by a cheeky face, the kingdom has been warped to think that if you want to get your worldly things, then go and do this God to get your worldly things. But that's not what Jesus was saying. What Jesus was saying is focus on God because in the grand scheme of things, all of this is going to pass away. And all the things which you think are a problem are actually not a problem. And Paul calls them our light and momentary afflictions, which work for us a far greater weight of glory. The little, little things that we like to worry about are not actually the big problem. Look, man, one of my best friends died in the beginning of, of last year. That's not the main problem in the world. I'll see my friend again one day in heaven. The main problem of this world is that there are still many people out there who have never heard about Jesus Christ. The main problem is that although you have a bank account and they pay you for, for your house job once a year, there's still a lot to be done because your bank account in heaven is actually empty. That's actually more important than everything else that's going on here. And so, and so Jesus says, and so, and so Jesus says, beware, beware, church, be careful about covetousness, greed, planning for this life. And, and that's what causes anxiety and depression. Everybody is sad and depressed. I didn't pass this exam. I didn't get, don't you see that time is almost up? It's all useless. It's all pointless. And so, and so. I can understand Jesus. Some of you came from eternity. Your father's inheritance. Have you not heard that heaven and earth will pass away? Have you not heard that all of this is going to be destroyed? That's, I'm discussing something that's far more important to test to the disciples and say, you know, guys, I beg you, when I leave, don't, don't turn your whole life to what you wear, where you live, what you earn, what, what car you drive. Look at the ravens. I give them transport, I give them food, I give them clothes, I give them everything. Look at the lilies. Eli, I wish you had chosen a, a rose or a bougainvillea. A lily. Do you a lily? Go and walk in even your, your small colleague gardens. We'll find something. Your father knows. Where's my best? Your father knows. God feed them. How much more? You know better than fast. Now, what's the 25? 25. And which of you, with taking any thought, can add a cubit to your stature? You know, stature means both age and, and size. Think and see if you can increase your age. Think and increase your age. You can't do anything. You can't. You can't. Look, you've been trying to make yourself rich for how long? You've been trying to make yourself intelligent since being. Forget. That's what causes depression and sadness. Of momentary things. All life. And, and God is like me, sitting in the cinema watching your life and saying, that's not what matters right now. Stop it. Then some other guy was saying that last time you punched me. Charlie, the bad people are coming on. You have to move the president now. That's just... 26. If you then, you're not able to do the thing which is least. Why are you trying to do the rest? You can't guarantee you'll be breathing tomorrow. So why are you thinking about the rest? <laughs> like, okay, li life and clothes. Which one is more important? You can't guarantee life. How much more clothes? I can't, I can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do it. You are useless. I'm useless. I can't preserve anyone's life or help anyone. My, my hands, my life is in God's hands. My hands are tied. Nothing I can do. The lilies, they spin not. Next verse, 28. If God clothes the grass which today is in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will not clothe your year of little faith? Now watch the 29. Seek not what you eat or what you drink, neither be of a doubtful mind. You know, I, how can I spend my life trying to do well? What? Analyze why you are upset. Analyze why you are worried. Analyze why you stay up at night. Your problems, 
you know the real issue that the real issue is not your beloved and it's not your marriage the real issue is your real beloved which is Jesus Christ he's more real than any man every ring you wear on this earth the ring and the marriage will all pass out your real beloved is the one who loves you that's the real important one all the other things I'm not saying beloved is not important I'm not saying marriage is not important that's why he says I did it for the lilies I'll do it for you but don't spend your whole life and your mind have you seen a raven without a beloved before they all have beloved You may not like my preaching, mom. Your father knoweth that you have given of these things. Then Jesus gets emotional. I can imagine. In the next verse, he says, See the kingdom of God and all these things shall be found. You see, God, heaven, heaven, heaven. Next verse, fear not, little flock. It's your father's. It gets intimate. Little flock. It's your father's pleasure. God wants you. You know, that's why Paul says, like, he wouldn't spare his only son. Are you praying about a job? Like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You've done four abortions. He forgave you. You are feeling guilty about what again? Like your whole life is that you are feeling guilty that you stole some money or you hobby. Those things so unimportant to God. But that's why the pastor said this is like, guys, the time is running out. Our main work is to prepare for heaven. Our main I'm, I'm standing here. I watch people. I know rich people, I know poor people. There's not much difference. Everybody has a watch. Some is a Rolex, some is a Casio. But everybody's watch is moving. Everybody's watch, everybody's time. Heaven, 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 heaven. He's a fool who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God, which means doesn't use what he has to direct everything he has to God. Look at verse 34. Jump, jump to 34. And he says, he gives them a secret. He says, 34. Because, because you see, bro, what, what you don't realize is that wherever you direct your treasure, in the end, your heart will also be there. Everything I have is for God. Everything I have is for heaven. Probably you go, there's nothing on this earth that impresses me. I, I can't, there's no, there's no, there's no car, there's no house, there's no, it's all useless. Marriage will disappoint you, a new car will disappoint you, your new job will disappoint you, America will disappoint you, England will make you, you'll be so sad, everything that you, this earth is so useless. So I post this, if you then the reason of Christ, seek those things which are about. I, and that's why Paul, Paul writes to Timothy, you know, those are some of the most blessed writers. He says, the time is at hand. I'm now ready to be offered up. He said, I've fought the fight. I've finished the race. I've fought the fight. He said, now, now, they set for me a crown. Not a car. No. They set for me a crown. A crown. A crown. They set for me. Is they set for you a crown? Are there any crowns? He said, and he said, and not for me only. No, I thank God. It's not for only Apostle Paul. He says, but for all other believers who love the second coming of the Son of God, all other Christians whose minds and hearts are on the second appearing. Crown. Do you have one? Do you have a crown? Do you have a crown? That's why James says, Charlie, be strong. Be strong. Even when you are suffering, be strong. Because when you overcome, you have a crown. You see, all the guys in the Bible and their home, you never hear Paul saying, and the Lord bless me with the house. And, you think Paul didn't have the house? Come on, man. I mean, for the Philippians to write to him, and he, for him to write to the Philippians and say, I received the offer that you sent to a prophetess, and I don't need anything after that offer. You should ask yourself what kind of prosperity the man is working. Tell the poor man. But you never hear him saying, you can read through John, 
You see, Jesus, the Bible said, when, when, they, when they broke the roof and they let the man into the house, that was Jesus' house. You can, oh, you can read the original Hebrew. It says that Jesus went back to his house and his disciples were with him. Jesus had a house which he could house to all disciples and other people in the house. Jesus owned the house. When Jesus died, why do you think they were fighting over his robe? Because Jesus used to wear designer clothes. Jesus wasn't poor. But, but listen, you will never, you will never find Jesus boasting about money or anything on this earth. No. Jesus' eyes were on heaven. And that's why when he hung on the cross, he just, he said, it is finished. What is finished? It's not his house that is finished. It's not his money. It's not, it's not his clothes. It's what God asked him to do. And that, that's why he's seated on the right hand side of God. Because his eyes were in heaven. It's not that he didn't have anything. But you see Paul talking about crowns. Crowns. You're sitting here. Every time you come to church, and we are preaching about serving God. But I thank God for first love because some of us will have nothing heavy for first love. I thank God for the church that we are today. And you see us. And then he's preaching about bearing fruit, seeking first the kingdom of God. Then all, one of us is shouting, Master, Master, my exams. Master, Master, I need a beloved. Master, Master, I need a national service posting. Master, Master. Come on, come on. You know, if you take me back to Luke 12, you know, if you take me back to Luke 12, I'll show you something that we close. If you take me back to Luke 12, you know, he says, he says something so, oh, I don't know why you're freezing. He says something so powerful. He says, he says, he says, help me find his name. Okay, 33. The one we jumped, 33. Look at this. Sell. That's why I said rich towards God. You know why? Have you ever realized that your parents never seem to have money when it's you? Yes. And then money, <laughs> money appears when it's for something else. Yes. This is what God was saying that people are rich towards other things. My money is for God. My goodness, my money, what I have in my pocket, I can sell what I have. When you say sell what you have, that means go and sell everything I have. It means be ready to give away anything for the sake of the gospel. Anything. My time is for God. My talent, my mind. My life is built on planning for heaven, not planning for this earth. Because as soon as you start planning for this earth and you start making architectural drawings to pull down your bands and make sure that you'll be comfortable for this life and you'll be at ease and you'll be merry and you eat and you drink. Is that night? Is that night? That's when God calls you home. You will never get to be at ease. As rich men, they never get there. You will never get there. You keep on building bigger and bigger and bigger bands, and one day you just be called home. She says, Kobe, this is my favorite parable. Provide, Kobe. Kobe, forget about your doctor's degree. Forget about shirts, money, clothes, shoes, wife. Forget about it. Provide yourself with a bag. I have a bag. I'm reading Luke 12, 33. You can look at it. Do you have a bag? Do you have a bag? A bag that doesn't grow old? A bag that doesn't turn? That is for a bag that cannot be seen by the temple in the heavens. Do you have a bag? I have a bag. I have a bag. I have a bag you can't see. It doesn't grow old. That's why I pack my treasures. Not gold. That's what we walk on in heaven. My bag has my soul winner's crown. For the thousands and the thousands that I give my life and my, 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 my destiny to using what I have to turn many to righteousness. I have a bag. My bag has the overcomer's crown for every tribulation and every temptation and every piercing and every accusation that I survive to serve God. I have a bag. Friends will disappoint you. Your marriage will disappoint you. Your job will disappoint you. This life will disappoint you. But when heaven and earth passes away, it's the promises of God that you make. I have a bag. I have a bag. A treasure in the heavens. It's not about this shit. I have a... You know, it's me, though, that John will in Revelation Clothed in white, singing, Amen, Amen, blessings and glory. We're gonna check in Revelation 7. Wisdom, thanksgiving. 
There's a wardrobe with the colors. There's a wardrobe with the hanger with my wife there on the waiting. Hey! The waiting. What about here? Oh no. No, you, you misunderstood. You misunderstood Jesus. Look at that. Before the throne, worshiping God. Verse 13, jump to verse 13. Verse 13. One of the elders answers him. What is? What is? In their white robes. And where did they come from? Where, where did they suddenly have my robe? Now, what, what about what, what shirt am I going to wear on this earth? Please. Please. Tell her, I'm not so damn poor. It's so damn poor, guys. Guys. I have a bag. I have a robe. I say, who are they? Where they come from? That's what I'm That's one of my favorite things. Sir, you know. <laughs> These are they. Which comes every time I'm in a tribulation. Mm. Maybe when you see me, you don't know I have tribulations. I cry, eh? I cry more in ministry than in real life. I've been betrayed more in ministry than in real life. I've been insulted and accused more in ministry than in real life. It's something if it's about here. My reputation. My savior was crucified naked. My reputation. The Bible says he made himself of no reputation. My reputation is nothing. My tribulation, I'm coming out of it. It's just. It's a light, it's a light. It's a momentary affliction. But it's working for me a rope. This, take me back. Revelation 7. These are they which they came out. Tell you what, they are warning you in Kolebu. It's nothing, please. They, they, they said the venue, they did, they said don't give us this. Come out of it. Come out of it. I'll come out. You want you die. That's the description of your 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 rising. It's coming out of tribulation. Your whole life is tribulation. God. And have washed their robes. They are washing my robes in heaven. The angels are washing me. They are waiting for me. I'll be dead soon. It's not a case. I'll be dead soon. You too, by the way. It's not that soon. Add 50 to your age. You are how old? You are dead or useless. It's finished. The beloved you are dying over, which you cannot marry for the next three years because you are in school. When you marry her, it's never 47 years. You see, at the time, the, 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 the medical school you say you finish, you're not going to specialize for seven years, and then you do house job for two years, that's already 10 years, nine, add some one for the gap that you wait for before you start your house job. It's already 10 years, it's not for 30. It, I mean, is this all only planning for here? Thou fool! Thou fool! Thou fool, there are bigger things. The Son of God has come to seek and save that which was lost. And he's standing right there in front of you. And this is your one time with Jesus. And your topic is your problem. It's not that he won't give it to you. He told you the ravens are against you. The ladies are against you. I will clothe you. Forget about that. There are bigger things. I have the bag. Luke 12, 33. Luke 12, 33. I'm closing. I have a bag. I have a treasure in the heavens. I have a soul winner's crown. I have an overcomer's crown. I have the crown. My favorite one is for those who love this appearance. When I wake up in the morning and roll the kettle, I say, Will it be today when I'll be caught up to meet him? Will it be today? Not, I don't need anything on this head. I don't need anything. Will it be today? Will he call me home today? Will he call me home today? Do you have a bag? Do you have a treasure in the heavens? Everything, your whole life has been about bands and fruits. Here on this earth, oh God, useless. Where there is no thief. You know, a thief doesn't only come to steal. No. Be careful of a thief. When somebody steals from you, be careful of the person. Never trust the person again. Yeah. May I always test people for stealing. Stealing a line. These are the two things you should be very careful of. Stealing a line. The thief comes not back to not only steal and also to and then when he's finished yes that's what has been happening to us all over the all over the world stealing you marry satan stole your joy 
Satan will steal the happiness. You have a beloved, you steal the relationship. You have a job, he steals your prosperity with debts and deceptions. And anything you have on this earth, there's some stealing and some removing, some destroying and some killing. And so when you finally have it, it's not what you thought it would be. Because there's a thief, but there is a place where the crowns cannot be stolen and the robes cannot be appropriated and nothing can be taken because that which has been given to you is given to you by Elsa Dai, the mighty breasted one. There's a place. That's where my savings are. Why you are saying this is a susu box? Open a real account. Open a real account. Neither more corrupted. Corruption of demons. Everything is corrupted. Sexuality is corrupted. Finances are corrupted. Minds are corrupted. One of the painful ones, relationships are corrupted. People you think you love, they, probably everything is useless. Everything is useless. Be rich towards God. You have you you are in medical school. Forget about using the medical school to be a doctor. Use the medical school to be a soul winner. You are now a doctor, you work in a hospital. Forget about using that being in the hospital to become a doctor and use that being in the hospital. Use your richness, not for the end. The man should have taken his goods and his bank and looked for some crusade to pay for. He should have gone out, he should have, he should have invested in the field. Oh, my crowns. My crowns, my crowns, my crowns, you know, that's why Paul calls it the weight of glory. There's a scale in heaven. How heavy will your glory be? Paul says, I'm convinced that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory, the glory. So may God help us. I have a bag. It doesn't get old. You can't see it, but I have a bag. I pray for you, know. I pray for your heart. Pray for your heart. Don't spend your life preparing for now. And forget to spend your life preparing for heaven. Father, thank you. Show us heaven. Now, listen. Then he says, as you turn your richness towards God, wherever your treasure is, what do you treasure in this life? You treasure your beloved, direct it towards God. You have money, direct it towards God. You have a talent, direct it towards God. Your time on this earth, direct it towards God. You have medical school, direct it. Anything you have, anything you are, anything you will become, direct that wealth and that blessing towards God. Because what happens is that where your treasure is, your heart seems to follow your treasure. And as that happens, you see that your heart is in heaven and your heart is not here. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. So may God direct our treasures in our hearts to heaven. Lift your hands and pray for yourself. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know your works tribulation look at this look at it your poverty but you are rich <laughs> your poverty but you are rich your your poverty but you are rich your poverty but you are rich because god wasn't looking at their earthly bank account he's looking at another bank account now look 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 look, look. and i know the blasphemy of them we say they are jews and are not but out of the synagogue of satan next verse next verse next verse verse 10 none of the fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer don't be afraid of the things you suffer. The devil will cast you in prison. You may be tried. You have tribulation. Ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give you a crown. Call me. These are the verses. Jesus said, labor not John 6. Labor not for the meat that perishes. What is your house? I mean, I feel sad for people whose whole lives are to have something to eat and to eat. I want to prosper. I want to this house. You know, the chief should ask. First Peter 5 4. We close with this one. First Peter 5 4. You're gonna like this one. First Peter 5 4. It's very short. First Peter 5 4. First Peter 5 4. Oh, who's that? And when 
the chief shepherd shall appear. You shall receive a crown. You will receive a crown. Ah, that's why Paul says to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 8, those who love like Christians don't want to talk about second coming. You're afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of what? What are you afraid of? That's when we shall be with him. And there shall be no more crying. And no more tears. And no more death. For the former things shall be passed. And, and, and he, the teacher, shall come and say, Behold, I make all things new. And there will be a new heaven. And a new earth. And will be changed in an instant. In the twinkling of an eye. will be caught up to what are you afraid? afraid of it's because you haven't saved and you haven't prepared for the next life when the chief shepherd shall appear i wish my singer was here but i don't know what she's abandoning but if but is she here come 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 give her a mic if sing i can only imagine i can only imagine i can only imagine what it will be like i can only imagine when i it's really going to happen. There's no story. By your side. It's really going to happen. Like one day you close your eyes on this Only side. Only imagine. You open your eyes on that side. And you what my eyes will see. I don't know. I don't know how to look back. When your face. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. Is before me. I hope you also me. can't wait. I hope you also have a back. I can only imagine. I can only use my imagination. The scriptures like that. When they say a crown of glory, what does it look like? What is it like? I can I can Surrounded by Surrounded the by glory. glory. Oh, what my heart be? What would I, what would I feel? Would, I will I, will it be like a dancing moment or maybe the presence of God?
going to go to heaven, where there are no thieves and there are no moths, where there's a new life, where he makes all things new. I want to go there. I heard you talk about heaven. I want to make sure I go there. But if I die now, I'm not sure if I will. Pray with me, Pastor. You're here like that. Lift up your right hand where you're standing. Lift up one, two, three. I see your hands. One, two, three. Anybody else? Join high above your head. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Outside. Lift up your hands where you stand. Lift up high above your head. I choose Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. More hands. More hands. More hands. I want to make it to heaven. I don't want to live this life and pretend to everybody and, and make it look good in front of everybody and not plan to look good before you, God. I want to make sure. Lift up your right hand high. I choose Jesus. I need Jesus. The whole congregation repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father. Everybody say, Heavenly Father. Keep your hands lifted up. Say, I come to you today. Just as I am. Save me, Jesus. Wash away my sins with your precious blood. Come into my heart. Change my life. Be my Lord. Be my master. Save me, Jesus. Transform my life. Give me your Holy Spirit. Help me to serve you. Help me to love you. Help me to know you. Help me to never go back to the world. Help me to meet you in heaven. Please write my name in the book of life. From today, I'm born again. From today, I have a new life. From today, my life has changed. From today, I belong to you. Say, Satan, let go of me. I belong to Jesus. I'm saved. Father in heaven.